Hotep, how's everybody doing? Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. It is uh, Friday, April 26, 2019, and we are live. All right, so hope everybody's doing well today. Okay, share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also. All right, so I want to talk about this story, and uh, I saw this article from uh, April 19th. Uh, 2019 from Vox.com, and I've dealt with this topic uh, before, and this deals with how American schools are incorrectly teaching the history of slavery. And this is a uh, this is a new article from uh, April 19th, and this deals with how uh, American schools keep teaching the history of slavery and uh, the history of uh, the civil rights movement in a way that uh, traumatizes African-American students, okay? So I wanna talk about this topic and there was a recent incident uh, at a school in Wisconsin and I saw the story about it, but I did not have a chance to, uh, to deal with the story. And this deals with um, a, a gym teacher at a school in Wisconsin who, uh, told the, they, they, they were uh, teaching the class and it was dealing with uh, understanding the history of slavery or something like that. And uh, the gym teacher uh, told the students that um, he would help them uh, find uh, do research online to learn about slave games, uh, games that uh, slave children played, okay? And this set off, um, some controversy there in Wisconsin, okay? So we're gonna talk about that as well. Okay, so everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page, invite your friends to tune in also, and uh, we'll post the information here. And then African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network also, okay? All right. Um, so you've seen me deal with these uh, topics before. And these things keep happening. We saw a rash of incidences like this uh, during the month of February 2019, African American History Month. And then um, we saw an incident in April of 2019 as well. But if we look at this story from um, Vox.com, schools keep teaching slavery and civil rights history in ways that traumatize black students. And also I'm gonna talk about um, this because the articles reference this study right here from the Southern Poverty Law Center called Teaching Hard History, American Slavery. Teaching Hard History, American Slavery, okay? And this is a 52 page study. Uh, some of you have heard me talk about it before. And this study documents how the history of slavery is being incorrectly taught uh, in American schools, not just schools where African-American children go, but in, in American schools all across the country, okay? And uh, some of the articles that I have here reference this study. And one of the things this study does is it talks about how uh, schools have to stop doing slave reenactments, reenactments of slave auctions, et cetera. They talk about how it traumatizes students, especially African-American students, okay? All right, how's everybody doing? We have Wendy, we have Finley, uh, a few of the people watching Renaissance, okay? And then also, if you like this type of information, you could donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, okay? And this uh, really helps us uh, keep doing the research, pay the bills, uh, stay on the air, finance our Sunday night show, the African History Network show also, okay? That helps a lot. And you can advertise with this as well. Okay, so uh, let's look at this. If we look at the article from Vox.com, so you had a teacher, most recently you had a teacher at an Arizona charter school who had third graders yell at an African-American student during a lesson on school segregation. So they were learning about the Little Rock Nine in Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, the uh, nine African-American students who, enter, uh, who uh, uh, desegregate the uh, high school there in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. So this was a reenactment once again, and this traumatized this uh, this third grade student. 
okay? All right, so let's look at this, uh, this article here. I have it pulled up. All right, so it seems like every few weeks now, there is another, yet another story of black students being forced to participate in insensitive classroom simulations of slavery and segregation that do far more, that, that do far more to traumatize than to educate about the most painful parts of American history, okay? Now, uh, the, the, this trend continued uh, last week after an Arizona mother posted on Facebook that her African-American son, a nine-year-old in third grade, had participated in a classroom simulation in which he had to, quote, walk through his class as his teacher and fellow students yelled at, humiliated, and berated him during a class, during a lesson on school segregation. This is according to the uh, Arizona Republic news publication there in uh, Arizona. Now, the incident uh, took place in early April 2019 at Basis Phoenix Central, B-A-S-I-S, Basis Phoenix Central, which is a charter school for students in kindergarten through fifth grade. The Arizona Republic reports that the simulation was meant to reenact the moment when the Little Rock Nine, a group of uh, African-American students who integrated Arkansas's Little Rock Central High School after the Supreme Court's uh, decision, Brown versus Board of Education, May of 1954. And uh, this is when they first entered the school and one were bombarded by racial slurs from white students and protesters, okay? So to teach this lesson, now the question I would ask is, who are you teaching the lesson to? If you have students to berate this African-American student, who are you teaching the lesson to? Why don't you have African-American students do that to white students if you want to teach a lesson? So the boy's mother's name is Claudia Rodriguez, and she explained in April, uh, in an April 12th Facebook post that she only found out about the reenactment after another parent told her about it. Now, Claudia Rodriguez added that when she, she added that um, when she told uh, that when she told the school that putting her son in that position was offensive and hurtful, educators reportedly told her that, quote, there has, there has some educational value in this incident because it started conversations in the homes of the other kids, end quote. So you used her son as a sacrificial lamb? See, once again, see, I'm trying to tell people, look, this is a free study. When you read this from the Southern Poverty Law Center, and they had historians who were on the advisory board to put this together, Teaching Hard History of American Slavery, okay, from the Southern Poverty Law Center. It came out February of 2018. When you read this study, one of the things, so what it does is it documents how the history of slavery is being incorrectly taught in schools across the country. And then it documents ways to uh, more correctly teach the history of slavery. And one of the things that it does is it tells you don't do slavery enactments. Don't do reenactments from the civil rights era of people being braided. It tells you don't do that because it traumatizes students, especially African-American students, okay? So I, I don't understand how I know about this and, and a lot of educators don't. Okay, go to splcenter.org, splcenter.org and search for... Um, splcenter.org, just search for Teaching Hard History, American Slavery. Teaching Hard History, American Slavery. And then we'll post the, um, we'll post the link here also. And, you, and it has the, the study, the full study, 52-page study. I took it to the printer and got it printed up. Um, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a PDF, okay? So you can download it. All right, let's continue. And uh, who we have here, uh, Karen, Sage, Parenthia. Uh, everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also. And African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Email us customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. Our current promotion, get three months for the price of one. We have two new uh, advertisers as well, theprofitroom.com and darkmagentas.com. You'll hear about them also. Okay, let's go back to this article. All right, so um, his mother, uh, Claudia Rodriguez, 
said, quote, his humanities teacher found it wise that in order for the kids to understand what black students or black kids during those times experience, that she would have my child who is black walk through the classroom as she, another, as she, another teacher, and the remaining 27 classmates yell, humiliate, and berate him, she, uh, she said in a Facebook post. She said that the school effectively prioritized other students at the expense of my child's emotional well-being. Now, according to uh, Phoenix ABC Channel 15, the uh, local TV news affiliate there, um, Claudia Rodriguez considered pulling her son from the school but decided against it. Now, the school initially defended the Little Rock Nine exercise, arguing that it had done the, situ the, had done the simulation before with no complaints, that students were allowed, that students were not allowed to use uh, slurs or derogatory language, and that other parents found it to be a valuable lesson. Now, let me just tell you all right now, a lot of times parents don't understand history. A lot of times parents don't understand how to teach history. So they will yield to the people who are supposed to have who are supposed to be educated in this area and have the degrees and supposed to know how to teach this okay but most parents haven't read this study either i'm telling you most parents haven't read this study either now a school person uh a spokesperson added that rodriguez uh son volunteered for the activity yeah but he probably didn't know what the outcome was going to be of the activity Quote, the characterization that I've heard is that the boy was fine, he was not upset, and the whole class thought it was a pretty good lesson, uh, said spokesperson Phil Handler. Um, he told this to uh, the Arizona Republic on April 15th, okay? Now, the, inc uh, the incident has thrust the Arizona school into an ongoing series of controversies involving American schools using insensitive or misguided lessons uh, to teach students about slavery and uh, the history of the civil rights movement. And then if we, if we look, um, you know, at the study for the Southern Poverty Law Center, Teaching Hard History of American Slavery, they surveyed 1,000 American high school seniors across the country. They also surveyed uh, more than 1,700 social studies teachers across the country. They also, the, the uh, advisory board for this, advisory committee for the study also reviewed 10, 10 commonly used U.S. history textbooks and examine 15 sets of state standards to assess what students know, what educators teach, what publishers should include in these textbooks, et cetera, okay? And what they found was only 8% of high school seniors surveyed knew that slavery was the central reason why the Civil War was fought. Only 8% knew this, okay? Um, and then you had only 32% knew that the 13th Amendment uh, is what formally freed the enslaved Africans. So 68% of high school seniors surveyed did not know that it took a constitutional amendment to legally free the enslaved Africans. And what happens is, what this means is, is that one, their parents did not teach them this information, number one. Two, the schools didn't teach them this, okay, for them not to know this. All right, maybe they were taught all this and they just totally forgot, I, I, I don't know. But it, they obviously, obviously they were not taught this at home, okay? And then 35% uh, thought that the Emancipation Proclamation, January 1st, 1863, freed the enslaved Africans, which is not true either, okay? It was the 13th Amendment. Okay, how you doing, uh, Nubia, uh, Sister Nubia, who's an archeologist, African-American female archeologist. How you doing, Sister? Uh, she's doing a lecture with May 11th. Post the information for your lecture. And then I'm doing a, a no, May 12th is yours. I'm doing mine May 11th, pre Mother's Day. So I got to let you know about that because I'm speaking in Detroit May 11th uh, uh, at the uh, International Institute. You have to get that up on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And then also there's a big event coming up in Detroit on April 27th. Um, at the uh, Hartford Memorial Baptist Church, okay? And I'll let you know about that as well. That is the second annual Marianne Godbodo Forum, and this is Parents Know Your Rights. 
okay and i'll be i'll be speaking there they put me on a pro oh, they put me on a program they contacted me yesterday so i'll be speaking there as well that's 8 a.m to 3 p.m uh at heart from memorial baptist church we just posted the information here and uh, we'll post it again on our facebook fan page okay that's a free event uh saturday april 27th in detroit 2019. all right now somebody asked where can i put purchase the book okay so the book is free okay <laughs> okay the book is free is download this is what i don't understand and that and not I'm not addressing this to you to ask the question this is what i don't understand People, my degree is in business administration. I've been studying history for 27 years, but I know about these studies. How is it that educators with PhDs in education and master's degrees in education that actually teach the children don't know about this study? I don't understand this, okay? My background is in business and history, and I've taught entrepreneurship, but I don't understand how I know about this study and they don't, okay? So what we'll do is I'll uh, pull up the link here I'll, I'll, I'll give you the direct link. Uh, the te it's called Teaching Hard History American Slavery. If you do homeschooling or anything like that, you can uh, use this as well. And um, one of the people on the committee was uh, Dr. Hakeem uh, Jeffries, Dr. Kwame, Dr. Kwame Hakeem Jeffries. Uh, and he is one of the nephews of Dr. Leonard Jeffries, okay? And you've heard me mention Dr. Leonard Jeffries many times as one of my teachers. Uh, the great Dr. Leonard Jeffries, one of our Grandmaster Scholar Warriors. So let me post it. This is the direct link to the study. Uh, it's the P it's, this is the link to the PDF of the study. So you can download that, okay? All right, let's continue here. But things like this are very disturbing when they happen to our children, and these are easily preventable. Things like this don't ha have to happen. Okay, and things like this could happen in schools with African American teachers because a lot of them don't know either. Okay, all right, so uh, let's continue here. So these lessons often encourage a shallow. Uh, so, so uh, the incident has thrust the Arizona school into an ongoing series of controversies. Okay, involving American schools using insensitive or misguided lessons, insensitive or misguided lessons to teach students about slavery and the history of the civil rights movement. Now, now these lessons often encourage a shallow understanding of history and fail to help students understand how that history connects to the present. For African-American students in particular, parents and historians argue that these simulations not only fail to educate, they can humiliate them and expose them to emotional distress. Okay, which is absolutely correct on top of the emotional distress that African American students and their parents are already dealing with PTSD, post traumatic stress uh, disorder, you know, post traumatic slave syndrome, Dr. Joy DeGruy. And then there's also another form of PTSD, and that's called President Trump stress disorder as well. Okay, I'm not only a client, I'm the president of the club. Okay. So, so you, we're not only dealing with PTSD, the, the, the trauma from a loved one being shot or friends being shot in the community, et cetera, but we're also dealing with PTSD, President Trump stress disorder, President Trump stress disorder. We see a rise in hate crimes taking place. Um, uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center had a, had a study dealing with that and documenting 1,020 uh, uh, operating hate groups in this country. We see a rise in hate crimes going back to uh, 2015, uh, as well. NBC News has reported uh, about this. I just did a broadcast where, you know, those were one of the things that I talked about. Uh, so when we see all of this happen, and then we see in schools, our children being traumatized during history lessons, okay? I mean, th these things are traumatic. We look at New York Times, February 20th, 2019, over 1,000 hate groups are now active in United States civil, civil rights group says. And uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center said the number of hate groups rose 7%, uh, uh, rose by 7% uh, in 2018 to 1,020. This was a 30% jump from 2014. So from 2014 to 2018, there was a 30% increase in the number of operating hate groups in this country. That broadly echoes other, uh, other worrying developments, including a 30% increase in the number of hate crimes reported to the FBI 
from 2015 to 2017 and a surge of right wing violence uh, that the Anti-Defamation League, the ADL, said had killed at least 50 people in 2018. All right. Then we look at NBCNews.com, um, November 21st, 2018. In every uh, this article is entitled "In Every Tally of Hate Crimes." In every tally of hate crimes, blacks are the most frequent victims. Okay, so if so, so we're operating in this climate of increased hate. Okay, and a lot of this is fueled by. Um, um, uh, Donald Trump, a lot of this is fueled by Donald Trump, Benedict Donald, okay? Uh, but then we have things compounded by history lessons gone awry like this. All right, let's continue. We'll come to some of your comments. How you doing, Martel? Uh, let's see, how you doing, Erica? Just a few of the people watching. Share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also. Then African American business owners post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast, and we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network um, as well. Okay, email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. Customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. All right, so let's go back to this article from blocks.com. All right, so classroom simulations about slavery and segregation can be especially harmful to African-American students. So the past few months have brought numerous examples of teachers using highly questionable lessons like mock slave auctions and underground railroad games to teach students about the history of slavery in the U.S. You've heard me talk about this as, as well um, recently, okay? Some of these cases recently, there was an article from Blocks.com from... Uh, March 13th, 2019, American schools can't figure out how to teach kids about slavery. And they talked about um, in a, let's see, in Bronxville, New York, Chapel School uh, in Bronxville, New York, which is a private school in an affluent, uh, predominantly white neighborhood north of Manhattan. Uh, New York's PIX Channel 11 News reported on a fifth grade teacher named Rebecca Antonozzi, who allegedly had her black students leave the classroom and according to one student pretend, pretended quote, to put imaginary chains along our necks and wrists and shackles on our ankles, end quote. The teacher then led the students back into the classroom where uh, their classmates, quote, were encouraged to bid on them, end quote, according to uh, PIX Channel 11 News. Now, Rebecca Antonozzi reportedly pretended to be a slave auctioner during this, the, the simulation. Now the classroom activity received attention after an African-American parent at the school complained, saying that her son was humiliated by the exercise. She, quote, I'm shocked and infuriated that this happened to my son, uh, end quote, uh, uh, the mother for next Harding told the New York Daily News. Okay, now, the, uh, Rebecca Antonozzi. So I went deep into this, and I actually saw an interview that she that she did, Rebecca Antonozzi. And uh, from the interview, I got the impression that there she 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 was not trying to harm the students. She didn't. Uh, she had no ill intent. Uh, the school, and I, I'll share. I'll share the. I'll uh, post a link to the actual interview because at first, when I heard the story, and I heard it from the mother's perspective, you know, I was like, "What is this?" Okay, but then when I when I did more research and I read numerous articles on it, and I actually saw an interview with the teacher, and she explained what was taking place. It was still a dumb decision to do that. Obviously, she has not read this, and obviously, the school has not read this, and this should be mandatory. This this study should be mandatory reading for teachers, especially those teaching history, because if Rebecca Antonozzi had read this, had read this study, she, 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 she lost her job behind this. If she had actually read this study, she would have known, don't do slave reenactments, okay? Don't do slave reenactments of any type, and she would still have her job today. All right, so the class, uh, okay, so the school has launched an investigation into the incident, uh, calling the alleged mock auction, quote, racially insensitive and hurtful, end quote, in an email to the school. Now, Rebecca Antonozzi has been removed from uh, class and has hired an attorney who argues that, uh, quote, the portrayal of the history lesson that has been reported is inaccurate out of, 
out of context and contains false facts. Uh, New, New York uh, Attorney General Letitia James says that her office is monitoring the incident. Okay, now uh, what she explained, Rebecca Antonosi explained, was that um, they were doing a lesson dealing with the history of slavery. And one of the students asked the question, uh, how could um, African people be sold like this and the slavery, et cetera, okay? So then she said, okay, I'll explain. Oh, oh she, she, according to her, um, she was, I think, talking about an auction or something like this, and they asked, you know, can you show us? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually play the clip for you, okay? Let me, uh, I'll play the clip for you because I have it. And um, I actually played the clip, and there was an article called "I Teach with My Heart." Okay, and there there are parents who have come out in support of her, uh, her history of teaching their students and how uh, she has helped their students. But once again, if she had read this study, if the school district made this mandatory reading for the uh, for the teachers, she she would not have lost her job. This would not have happened, okay? All right, so News 12 Westchester, uh, they have an article, I teach with my heart, teacher pushes back amid slavery firestorm. So we're gonna, uh, we'll, we'll go to this clip, hold on, let me stop this other thing playing. Uh, so I'm monitoring this broadcast. Also here, so let's silence that. Just a second. Then I actually play this interview. Uh, let's see. Okay, which one is this here? Okay, it's an ad playing, so we'll get past this ad. So I teach with my heart. Teacher pushes back a mid slavery lesson, and do I have that article here? Okay. Let's see. Well, this local social studies teacher defending herself over accusations of staging a mock slave auction at an elite private school in Westchester. That story aired here on 12 and made international headlines. Now, this white teacher accused of lining up African American yeah. students. Do not, would never, ever put chains on them. Well, this local social studies teacher defending herself over accusations of staging a mock slave auction at an elite private school in Westchester. That story aired here on 12 and made international headlines. Now, this white teacher accused of lining up African-American students and staging this mock slave auction. Well, tonight that teacher is breaking her silence to News 12's Tara Rosenberg. How did you feel when you saw your name and slave auction in a headline that circled the globe? I have not been able to function, um, and I couldn't even look at the words on the paper because I know what was true, and I know my intentions is to never hurt or offend or upset anyone. The Westchester private school teacher making international headlines after being accused of taking a history lesson on slavery too far is speaking out for the first time. I've been getting panic attacks, waking up in the middle of the night. The firestorm ignited after a parent accused fifth grade teacher Rebecca Antonazzi of staging a mock slave auction two weeks ago inside her classroom at the chapel school in Bronxville, in which black students she claimed were placed in imaginary chains while white students bid on them. Point blank, did you hold a mock slave auction in your classroom? Absolutely not, it was a false accusation. Antonazzi insists her goal was simply to bring history alive to an inquisitive classroom learning all about colonial America. So we were reading the sentence that says um, indentured servants and slaves were taken against their will. And one of my students said, this is very unfair. How can they be taken against their will? Well, what do you mean? Can you show us? Absolutely. I said, okay, how many of you are African American? They raised their hand. I said, okay, go line up the door for me, please. So they lined up by the door. Bad and move. Said, if you were living during this time, you would be treated unfairly and brought to the new world against your will and forced to work. And basically what would happen is they would say, okay, who, um, let's, let's bid 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, great. 
Males, sit down, you're working in the field. Females, sit down, you're working in the domestic households. And that was literally under two minutes. Two minutes that would catapult the Tony private school and Antonazi into crisis mode. My principal did to call me last week and he said that we love you as a teacher, you're employed, we just want to diffuse the situation, talk to the parents, and you'll be back at school in the classroom doing what you love. And unfortunately, that did not happen. What happened? Um, I got a call last night from my lawyer saying that unfortunately, they terminated my position. Um, teaching is not a profession for me. It is it's my life. I teach with my heart, and anyone that knows me, no, but I have no ill intentions. But Antonazi says support from the community has started to pour in. I have over 50 references right now from parents who know me. And some of them are now speaking out. She's not capable of something like that based on the person that we know, given her nature, sweet, kind, loving, and she treats all kids with uh, respect, regardless of their skin pigmentation. And it's praise like that, Antonazi says, is carrying her through the most difficult chapter of her life. I just want to be able to get past this. Tara Rosenblum, News 12. Okay. Thank you, Tara. Now, Antonazi has hired a lawyer and may file a lawsuit. The Chapel School, meanwhile, hired a New York City public relations firm who told us tonight an internal investigation is underway with the goal of creating a long-term action plan to tackle racial sensitivity. I, I sure hope I sure hope they download this study. <laughs> I, <laughs> if you if you want an action plan, first thing you should do is download this study from the Southern Poverty Law Center. Okay, so that was um, from News Channel 12, Westchester. Um, I teach with my heart. Teacher pushes back amid slavery lesson. That was uh, from March 18th, uh, 2019. We'll post a link here on the thread of the broadcast. We just posted the link uh, once again to the uh, study also. All right, but see, it, so apparently the school, the school district, see the schools, the school districts, they have to have standards. They have to have standards. And this is one of the things that the study shows. It shows a lack of standards in how this history is taught. All right. So if we look at uh, an article from uh, February 4th, 2018, why schools fail to teach slavery's hard history, why schools fail to teach slavery's hard history. This is from NPR.org, uh, uh, National Public Radio. And this deals with... Uh, this study from the Southern Poverty Law Center, because I've read a number of different articles dealing with this, and I've read the study also, by the way. Um, they quote, let me see, where is he in here? They quote uh, Hassan Kwame Jeffries, yeah, Hass Dr. Hassan Kwame Jeffries, um, uh, Associate Professor of History at uh, Ohio State University, okay? And uh, he, is the, he, he was the chair of the Teaching Hard History Advisory Board. All right. And he's one of the nephews of uh, uh, Dr. Leonard Jeffries. He said slavery is hard history. OK, um, it is hard to comprehend the inhumanity that defined it. It is hard to discuss the violence that sustained it. It is hard uh, to to teach the ideology of white supremacy that justified it. And it is hard to learn about those who abided it. OK, and what what happens is one of the recommendations is that the history of racism in this country and slavery uh, and white supremacy, they all, they have to all be connected, okay? They have to all be connected. And oftentimes what happens is, is that slavery is taught separately from the ideology of white supremacy and understanding uh, what racism is, racism being a system of advantage and privilege distributed based upon race. Slavery is taught, um, separately from that and it's taught that oh that's something in the past but slavery mal distributed wealth power and resources into the hands of uh, of europeans into the dominant white society and we're still dealing with the legacies of slavery today so the legacies of slavery and the mal distribution of wealth power and resources is not taught how that impacts conditions today how that impacts our society today and they all have to be connected. Okay. Uh, in an article from us uh, from msn.com, 
uh, U.S. News and World Report, students don't know slavery was a central cause of the Civil War report shows. Uh, this article is from, uh, what's the date on this? This is from February 2018 also. Uh, Dr. Hassan Kwame Jeffries is quoted saying, it's important that everyone understand that slavery is truly at the foundation and formation of this nation. You can't really, uh, you really can't understand the American past or present without having a good grasp of the role that slave, slavery played in this country, okay? So this is why this history is so important. And then at the same time, this ties into the arguments over the Confederate monuments. This ties into Charlottesville. Uh, this ties into uh, uh, Donald John Trump, okay? The, uh, Benedict Donald, uh, unindicted co-conspirator number one. That this, that all of this ties together. All right, let's look at some of your uh, comments here. And let me refresh this, turn that sound back on. Put the headphones back in. Just a second. So I'm trying to monitor the audio. All right, who do we have here? Uh, we have Rich. We have Tamara. Okay. And if you like this type of information, you can register for the online courses that I teach. Uh, they're all on demand. We have a 10 course online bundle pack. I teach an online course called Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Uh, this is a 14 hour, seven session online course. It's all on demand. Go at your own pace. And I do uh, a PowerPoint presentation. We have video clips. Uh, we have uh, references to books, everything. Okay. This is something you can use with your children. I don't do, I, I'm not cursing, it's not vulgar or anything like this. And um, it's, it, you can watch around the world, it's all on demand. So it's on sale right now, $40, regularly $130. You just posted the link here. Uh, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, What They Didn't Teach You in School. It's also at, uh, on the homepage of our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right, so let's continue with this. Uh, let's go to some of your comments here, and then I want to get to this other article also, because I have a bunch of articles dealing with this. How you doing, Greg Osborne, Alita? Uh, good morning to you. And then the African-American business owners post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast also. And we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Uh, current promotion, get three months for the price of one. All this helps to support the African History Network, it helps to support you as well. Okay, we have Alita. Okay, great. Let me look at some more of your comments here. People have been commenting. All right, Rick, uh, as a child of two teachers and having been told that I'm a natural teacher, I know uh, one does not teach with their heart, you teach with your brain and use your so-called uh, heart to temper the knowledge, all right? I come from a long line of teachers also. She was saying that she had no will intent, she loves her students, things like this. My mother taught five decades in Detroit Public Schools, so I come from a long line of teachers, educators as well. Uh, Michelle uh, said, teacher, teacher sad, abusive towards singling black students and displaying how to treat slaves was not appropriate. Yeah, see, these slave reenactments, man, are very damaging to the students, okay? So these are things that should not happen. All right. So then, so you had that in uh, Bronxville, New York, right? Um, and then uh, coming just weeks after the end of a particularly insulting African American History Month marked by similar controversies in other schools, the story of the alleged mock uh, classroom mock auction fits into a broader pattern of ill-conceived or outright offensive classroom simula simulations about slavery, all right? Then you had, um, okay, so they go on to talk about how that's, that's a problem and not just because students aren't getting an adequate education. Poor, poor lessons about slavery also make it harder for people to see how the impacts of enslavement continue to affect black communities in the present, okay? So 
when you just when you just look at slavery as something that ends in 1865 and not understanding the, the, the effects of it going into Reconstruction, going into African-Americans being locked out of massive land giveaways, hundreds of millions of acres of land given away. 1862, the Homestead Act gave away about 250 million acres of land for 100 years. Southern Homestead Act of 1860, uh, 1866 gives away about 45 million acres of land. Uh, the Dawes Allotment Act of 1887 and gives away 138 uh, million acres of land. Two thirds of that goes to white people. And you have a maldistribution of wealth pound resources uh, throughout the decades leading up to today. Then you have reconstruction ending in 1877 with the compromise of 1877. You have an increase uh, in uh, Terrorism against African Americans, Plessy versus Ferguson, a U.S. Supreme Court case, 1896, which legalizes Jim Crow laws and separate and uh, separate and equal. Um, you have a, a, a rejuvenation of the Ku Klux Klan uh, going back to 1915 with the movie The Birth of a Nation coming out February 8, 1915. You have the Great Migration from 1915 to 1970, about six million African Americans migrating from the South up North and going out West. And as they're moving into the, into these communities, they're coming going into Detroit, Michigan, and Gary, Indiana, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, et cetera. They're going out West, Los Angeles, California. You have an increase in terrorism against them. Okay, 1943, during World War II, you have a huge race riot here in Detroit, okay, during World War II. Okay, so the, 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 this, the history of slavery has wide-ranging impact on what is taking place today. So when, uh, and, and, uh, when we deal with the fight for reparations, um, and if you, if you have seen some of my broadcasts, I've been talking about this, if we're ever going to get reparations, America needs a massive history lesson, okay? If we're ever going to get reparations, America needs a massive history lesson because most, most Americans are woefully ignorant on, the, on history period, especially the history of slavery, and this includes African Americans as well. Most African Americans don't really understand the history of slavery, all right? They may have seen roots, the first roots, roots the next generation, re, roots reimagined, but don't really understand the history of slavery. This ties into the debate over the Confederate monuments. And a lot of people don't know Confederate monuments were largely erected not to honor Confederate soldiers and Confederate generals and Confederate heroes who all committed treason against this country, had to get a blanket pardon from President Andrew Johnson after Lincoln was assassinated April 14th, at the East Shot April 14th. Um, but not, but uh, not only that, you're dealing with um, not, not only that, you're dealing with not understanding that it, um, uh, I lost my train of thought for a minute here, but when we deal with the fight for reparations, uh, America needs a massive history lesson. When you deal with the Confederate monuments, they, they were largely erected to terrorize African Americans and keep us into a low subservient position in society. The, the two periods of times when you have the most number of uh, Confederate monuments erected were uh, 1895 to 1915 and 1955 to 1970. And 1955 is right after, uh, the year after Brown versus, Bo Brown versus Board of Education desegregation case. And there was a huge effort in this country not to desegregate. The uh, governor of Virginia shuts down all the schools in Virginia when that verdict comes down because they didn't want to desegregate. You have a, a, a large number of schools that are going to be renamed after Confederate generals and Confederate heroes in opposition to the uh, desegregation of the schools. You also have an increase in the usage of private schools to keep schools segregated for white uh, children. And then you're going to uh, have an increase in the use of school vouchers. And school vouchers were, were given to low income white families so their children can go to these white private schools. And the vouchers were not given to low income African American families because they're trying to keep these schools segregated. All right. So all this ties into understanding history, history of slavery understanding racism as a system of advantage and privilege distributed based upon race coming out of the ideology of white supremacy. All right, Tamara said, loving your top, thanks. Uh, Vicky, personal financial success system. All right, you have a website, Vicky. 
uh, Alita Champagne uh, said I was a physical science teacher in Georgia, but was surprised that black kids didn't know about slavery or basic facts of their history. Exactly. So if the children don't know, that means the parents didn't teach them. But not only, okay, so you're in Georgia, all right? In Georgia, you have a city called Stone Mountain in Georgia. In, in Stone Mountain, Georgia, there is a huge mountain. And on the side of the mountain, carved in the side of the mountain, are uh, the reliefs of Confederate heroes. General Robert E. Lee, PGT Beauregard, and Jefferson Davis. Jefferson Davis was from Mississippi. He was the, he was the president of the Confederacy. This is it's a huge mountain. I've been to Stone Mountain. Google Stone Mountain, Georgia. It's a huge mountain. They have this. They have th th these reliefs on the side. Th these carvings on the side of Stone Mountain of these Confederate heroes. <clears throat> and Stone Mountain is an amusement park. I've been to the amusement park. I've climbed to the top of the mountain. People, uh, they have a trail where you can walk or run up the side of the mountain all the way to the top. So people use it for exercise, things like this. Right. So I was there in 2017, July 2017, and I was there with director Rick Mathis of the Black Friday series. We were filming the third installment of Black Friday. So he was filming my portion. So if you see that documentary, you see me in there. That was filmed on top of Stone Mountain. When you get to the top of Stone Mountain and you, you could take the cable car up and take it back down. He didn't tell me that. To, it took us 35 minutes to, to climb up. But hell, we didn't, we're in the summertime. It took us, I got a 25 pound backpack on my back. I didn't know we were going to do that type of strenuous work. So we, so we get all, almost, we climb all the way to the top. And then he tells me you could take the cable car back down. I'm like, what the hell? Cable car? What do you mean cable car? You know, I didn't know I could take a cable car up because I would have taken the cable car up the mountain. You know, I took the cable car back down. I was down in two minutes. I'm like, you ain't tell me about no cable car. But anyway, you get to the top of Stone Mountain. There's a, there's a souvenir shop. Okay. So I go in the souvenir shop. I barely crawl in there, right? I go into the souvenir shop and on almost all the souvenirs, they got these Confederate heroes. They have they have the little emblem on there, on their pennants, their keychains, their mugs, their glasses, their hats. Um, almost all the souvenirs in there, they had these Confederate heroes, quote unquote Confederate heroes, who committed treason against the U.S. government, picked up arms against the U.S. government, and they were fighting to maintain slavery, which, which was central to their way of life and their wealth. This is a, this ain't something, I'm not talking about 19, I'm not talking about, I saw this in 1967. I'm talking about this was there in 2017 in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and it's still there today. So when we deal with the fight for reparations, right, we have to understand America needs a massive history lesson because we don't understand the opposition, the backlash that will come with this fight. And even if it gets um, signed into law after it passes Congress and it gets signed into law by president, nobody's talking about the fight in the courts that you have to prepare for. And one out of five or one out of six federal judges were nominated by Trump. So I'm thinking like 15 moves ahead all the way to the end game to checkmate. And we have to understand how to navigate and predict this backlash and how to fight against it, how to prepare for it. But the first thing, America needs a massive history lesson. Also, we need to read the US Constitution. Because we have to understand how to make legal arguments for, for reparation. And we need to read the U.S. Constitution as well. A lot of us, a lot of white people don't understand the Constitution. One of them is Donald Trump. Okay, I heard about Stone Mountain, but, but didn't climb in the leader said, fair, uh, I'm from Haiti and we dealt with slavery too. Oh, absolutely. Haitian Revolution. Absolutely. Haitian Revolution, 1791 to 1803, declared their independence January 1st, 1804. You have Bookman Dada and... Uh, Jean Jacques Dessalines and uh, Toussaint L'Ouverture. And this is, and, and, and because of the Haitian Revolution, these African people fighting against the French, the Spanish, and the British, because they defeated the French, the Spanish, and the British. Okay. 
Um, this is how you got the Louisiana Purchase of 1803 signed in the law by uh, uh, President Thomas Jefferson. And the U.S. got 828,000 square miles of land for less than three cents an acre because the Haitians beat the French so badly, France almost went bankrupt. So they sold the land that they had in this, in, in this country. They sold that land to, uh, to raise money. Okay, they sold it for, uh, it was about $15 million. And the majority of the land that France sold the U.S., France didn't own. It was land stolen from Native Americans and indigenous African people. If you read uh, um, history.com, the official website of the History Channel, they have an article called um, Louisiana Purchase. Okay, history.com. Re read that article. They tell you there that most of the land that France sold the U.S., France didn't even own it. All right, let's look at some more of your comments here, and we'll go back to this article. All right, and then uh, very quickly here, uh, we have a new sponsor, a uh, new advertiser, theprofitroom.com. The Profit Room is a stock market trading and education company that has mentorship programs that are designed for beginners. They teach individuals how to create generational wealth through trading and investing in the financial markets. Now, are you interested in how Wall Street works? It is interesting how certain opportunities are not presented to our community, especially when it involves billions of dollars that are being exchanged every day through the stock market. Why should you be left out and not get a piece of the action? Uh, they can educate you on stocks, options, futures, and forex. Their specialty is day trading, one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Uh, visit their website, theprofitroom.com, theprofitroom.com. You may have seen the article that blacknews.com uh, did on them also in uh, 2018. We'll post that article here uh, as well, okay? And then uh, African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. We can let you know how you can advertise with us. We take your 30 second, the 60 second audio commercial, put it into the audio podcast of our shows. We'll also do a live reading of, uh, 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 of your uh, promotion. We'll talk about that here doing our Facebook Live broadcast as well. And we put this on our YouTube channel uh, also, okay? So our current promotion is uh, get three months for the price of one. We can get you up and running today. Email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. All right, let's continue. Uh, let's look at some of the, uh, okay, Tamara, Tamara said, I uh, hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm not sure if it's Tamara or Tamara. It looks like Tamara. Continue to left to continue to let our enemies teach our youth reparations for defamation of race, of lost people, lawsuits, America, the world will get our checks. Okay. We have to make legal arguments. Those lawsuits have, 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 when they have these lawsuits, they lose in court. And each time when these lawsuits happen, it raises the standard. <clears throat> it raises the bar that has to be met for the next lawsuit. Read the article from Dr. Jahi Issa, uh, Dr. Jahi Issa, and Brother Reggie Marbury called Reparations is Dead. Um, and uh, these scholars have a way to revive something like that. It's from 2017, okay? Because they go deep into this and in understanding how to make legal arguments for reparations. Because unfortunately, a lot of these arguments floating around for reparations are not legal arguments, okay? Uh, unfortunately. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. This is why we have to understand law and history. And uh, this is why we have to read the U.S. Constitution because Article 1, Section 9 of the U.S. Constitution ties into why uh, Congress passed March 2nd, 1807, a, a law to uh, outlaw the international slave trade, in which was the importation of African people into this country. That went into effect January 1st, 1808, because it was stipulated in Article 1, Section 9 of the U.S. Constitution that the earliest that uh, the international slave trade could be outlawed was in 1808. That ties right into the Constitution, but most people don't know this. Read Article 1, Section 9. Go to loc.gov, which is the Library of Congress website, loc.gov, and uh, you can read the Constitution there, or archives.gov, okay, as well, which is the uh, National Archives. All right, so we've seen these different instances. We've seen uh, mock slave auctions. Uh, we saw a uh, board game. We saw a board game called uh, Escaping Slavery as well. Uh, I talked about that recently. Uh, Escaping Slavery was a, uh, let's see here. This was 
CBS 17, CBS 17.com, a local news affiliate there in Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, had an article, Monopoly Like Slavery Game Played by Fourth Grade North Carolina Class Outrageous Grandmother. Okay. And this game was called Escaping Slavery. Uh, this, uh, and in the Underground Railroad board game called Escaping Slavery, uh, teachers gave students a freedom punch card, a freedom punch card. So you get like a punch card from Subway or Domino, something like that. They got a freedom punch card. If your group runs into trouble four times, you will be severely punished and sent back to the plantation to work as a slave. Okay, what happened to Monopoly? game of life what happened to those shoots and ladders and you know i mean no i'm old right well i'm not old but you know <laughs> shoots and ladders <laughs> what happened to board games like that okay <laughs> so the underground railroad was okay her uh so the child's name is um i don't know if they told the child's name here but the grandmother complained okay and they're using the name of Dennett, Dennett for the grandmother. Uh, the grandmother asked only to be identified for her first name because she fears retaliation toward her family or her granddaughter. All right, so an African-American grandmother's outraged after her granddaughter's fourth grade school teacher led the class in a role-playing game that included mentions of shackles, plantations, severe punishment, and simulated slaves running toward freedom. All right, now, um, Dennett's granddaughter attends Coddington Elementary School in Wilmington, North Carolina. That's where you had the Wilmington Massacre of 1898 also, by the way. And the child brought home papers from the slavery board game. Um, so her granddaughter uh, told Dennett, the teacher told students to write their quote unquote slave name on the back of the car. All right, after, after the four punches, were they going to hang them, she asked. Uh, were they going to kill them? What else was going to go on after this? Okay, you're teaching these kids uh, slave plantation. So the game, the game papers show cartoon character depictions of slave families and shackles. This is a board game. This is supposed to be education. All right, people, I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you, I'm not making this stuff up. This is what's taking place right now. I'm not talking about something that happened in 1967 or 77. This happened this year. Okay. All right. So uh, the grandmother, whose name is Dennett, D-E-N-E-T-T, -T, said, uh, on this one, you can see, so she's holding up one of the punch cards, right? On this one, you can see pictures where they have shackles. This is a game that the school system is probably purchasing online for the kids to participate in. And in this day and time, this is horrifying. I don't know how other people feel about it but I think it's terrible, okay? Now, they wouldn't do something like this to, you know, to teach. They wouldn't have a board game to teach about the Holocaust, you know, Nazi Germany. You know, they, they, they wouldn't do something like this, okay? Um, so I, I just find this, um, I just find this very interesting. All right. Okay, so, this was a, um, yeah, this was an article from CBS17.com, Monopoly-like slavery game played by fourth grade North Carolina class, outrageous granddaughter. <clears throat> so this was, so um, the school apparently thought this game was like, you know, educational. This was good. So the school system responds. Now, WECT contacted a new Hanover County School spokesperson about the game. And the uh, school official defended his use. Imagine that. The spokesperson said, the spokesperson said the Black History Month activity was conducted in small groups with students discussing the activity with the teacher. The overall purpose was to help dispel myths about slavery and help students understand it was a horrible ordeal, according to a spokesperson. Okay. Now, in a statement emailed to WECT, Coddington Elementary School principal Graham Elmore wrote that um, fourth grade social studies teachers used the monopoly light game in January, and it was obtained from the educational website, Teachers Pay Teachers. The educational website, Teachers Pay Teachers. I need to check out that website. The purpose was to play a role to increase interest and enthusiasm for historical events. 
the teachers wanted to share how the people communicated and worked for change and equality in their communities. Okay, this activity is by no means intended to disregard the fact that slavery was an inhumane and unnecessary period for so many people, uh, according to the uh, product description. Okay, this, this was a, this right here. The activity is by no means intended to disregard the fact that slavery was an inhumane and unnecessary period for some people. That is um, a product description from the uh, apparently from the website Teachers by uh, Teachers Pay Teachers. The board game is part of a larger activity teachers have used for the past two years, according to um, Principal uh, Graham, uh, Graham Elmore. The principal confirmed a card in the game references going back to the plantation, but there was, quote, no emphasis on picking any names, according to the spokesperson. All right, you can read the rest of this. This is just ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. Okay. And uh, when you read the study, Teaching Hard History of American Slavery, one of the things they talk about is how uh, you would gain a lot more from reading slave narratives than doing these board games, doing slave reenactments, mock slave auctions, etc. All right, let's uh, let's continue here. Okay, Joe. Yeah, you're right, my brother. Uh, Vicky, thanks for sharing the lunch. Have a blessed day, everyone. Alita, uh, I was born and raised in New Orleans, so we definitely learned about Louisiana Purchase. Right. Okay, let's go back to the um, original article here. Okay, so the first article I talked about was from Vox.com. Schools keep teaching slavery and civil rights history in ways that traumatize black students. Yes, they do. And these are examples of it. Okay, so uh, let's go back to that article here. So classroom simulations about slavery and segregation can be especially harmful for black students. Um, the past few months have brought numerous examples of teachers using highly questionable Lessons like mock slave auctions and under, uh, underground railroad uh, games to teach students about the history of slavery in the U.S. But these stories are hardly new. Each school year seems to bring at least one high profile story of a high school uh, of a school lesson on slavery gone wrong with black parents and students regularly calling the activities offensive, irresponsible and degrading. OK. Uh, offensive, irresponsible, and degrading. The schools uh, themselves have had varying responses to the incidents. In some cases, like an incident early in April where a physical education teacher in Wisconsin allegedly asked black seventh graders to research how to play slave games, quote unquote, slave games. Uh, the schools have apologized and placed teachers on leave. In other cases, like the uh, recent Phoenix example, uh, schools have attempted to explain why the activity should not be seen as offensive. All right. And when we have the, uh, let's see, where's that article here? I'm dealing with, there was one that just took place. Yeah, there was one that just took place in Wisconsin. Uh, this was this month. This was in April 2019. Shorewood teacher on leave for asking students who are black to research slave games. Okay. So this is a, this is, I, I didn't get a chance to talk about this on my show, but uh, Fox Channel 6, fox6now.com had this article. This comes out of Shorewood, Wisconsin. A teacher at Shorewood Intermediate School has been placed on leave because of concerns over a racist assignment, quote unquote, racist assignment. Students say they were asked to learn to play, quote unquote, slave games. Now, Mahaley Stevens is a student at this school, and um, she, she told her mom, she said, I, she said, I went to my mom like, mom, what are slave games? Okay. Now, Mahaley uh, Stevens is a seventh grader at Shorewood Intermediate School. She and other students alleged they were separated into groups based on their race and asked to research games from their cultures. Now, Mahaley Stevens said, quote, she told us to all go get into our groups. And then she told us that we sh that 
she would help us research slave games, okay? Now, if you're trying to research games from different cultures, why would you automatically go to slavery? Why would you look at games that were played in West Africa? Why wouldn't you look at games played in East Africa? Why would you just automatically go and say, we're gonna look at games, slave, we're gonna look at slave games. Why would you just automatically do that? Now, uh, her mother is Dr. Rashonda Rashun Stevens. Dr. Rashonda Stevens said, I never heard of such a thing. I never knew slaves had opportunities to play games, okay? Now, slave, slave children would oftentimes play games and depending upon the size of the plantation, um, the enslaved Africans who were too old to work in the fields, oftentimes, they would look after the children who were too young to work in the fields, depending upon the size of the plantation. If you only have, you know, some plantations only have four or five slaves on. Others have 200, 250. It depends, okay? But, um, yeah, you're going to have that, but that doesn't mean that should be an assignment. That doesn't mean that that should be a school assignment. So this incident happened on April 1st. And it was not an April Fool's joke. The superintendent of Shorewood School District says the school was made aware of it on April 3rd, 2019. They sent a letter to parents saying, in part, a teacher shared an activity with students on the subject of games from around the world. After the class on April, uh, April 1st, allegations were made that the teacher had suggested to African-American students in the class that they research games that have been play, played by enslaved children. The administration became aware of these concerns on April 3rd. We immediately launched an internal investigation into the matter. Now, um, McHaley Stevens' mother says this sort of thing has happened before. Her older daughter had the same teacher last year. Okay, her older daughter had the same teacher last year, and uh, Dr. Rashonda Stevens said, quote, this child was asked to be a part of the colored club, the colored club, okay, referring to her older daughter, from the same teacher. So the teacher has put been put on indefinite leave. Uh, Dr. Rashonda Stevens said, quote, how many more times do people have to feel uncomfortable until change happens? We have to work together, have those courageous conversations and provide support not only for the adults, but most importantly for our children, because it's not fair for our children to have to be uh, comfortable with being uncomfortable. OK, so check out this. Um, Check out this article. This is from fox6now.com. We'll post the link here also. And um, this this just happened in the month of April. These things, you know, things like this keep happening. All right. Let's look at some more of your comments here. Okay. Jillian said we need to teach our black people who we are as, as modern day Americans. Uh, well, we need to deal with ancient, we need to deal with the African, ancient African history. We need to deal with a chronology of history. We need to understand the history of the Moors in Europe, the 800 year occupation of the history of the Moors in Europe, how this leads to the transatlantic slave trade happening, understand history all the way up to today. And to be able to put together a black agenda, you have to first assess where you are currently. You have to first assess your conditions here to understand what plans to lay out and, and understand where it is you're trying to go to understand where you are today. You have to understand the history of how you got into that predicament. Okay, so this is why history is so important. The people's history and culture teaches them how to deal with the problems of the past and the present and the future to meet the needs of the community. This is why this history is so important, okay? So uh, if you want to learn more about this type of information, you can register for the online course. Uh, online courses that I teach, they're all on demand. Watch at your own pace. You can start watching right now. Uh, it's on sale. It's a 10-course online bundle pack on sale, $40, regularly $130, and includes a 14-hour, seven-session online course I've done dealing with understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Kemet, one of the original names for Egypt. The Moors dealing with the um, the African Moors who take the teachings from ancient Egypt into Europe and civilize Europeans. Okay, this is a book from uh, Renoko Rashidi, Black Star: The African Presence in Early Europe. 
This is one of the sources I use in the in the course. You don't have to read any of these books to be able to follow along, but I uh, use it for reference. And uh, we deal with thousands of years of history, okay? So we just post a link here. It's also on our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. You can watch from around the world and uh, that information will blow you away. Okay. Let's continue here. Uh, Tamara said, we have been uncomfortable here all our lives for generations, fed up. Um, okay, take your money out of uh, white banks. Farrah, okay, we have Farrah. Jillian said, okay, uh, I agree the kids need to be taught uh, about our people's recent accomplishments, but remember also that those who neglect to teach their history and lessons learned are doomed to repeat it. Know thyself, past and present. That's what Farrah said. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. Okay, this is why this type of information is so important. And a people in a people's history and culture gives them their values, their interests, and their principles. Their VIPs that values their interests and their principles. This influences their economic empowerment and their political empowerment. Okay. All right. And uh, if you like this type of information, also you can donate to the African History Network. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN Show. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN Show, or click on the yellow donate button at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. All right, so let's go back to the um, first article I was talking about from Vox.com. I have a ton of articles here dealing with this topic. Schools keep teaching slavery and civil rights history in ways that traumatize black students. This is from April 19th, 2019. This is from April 19th, 2019. <clears throat> All right, so, um, so they talk about the uh, uh, so they talk about the reenactment dealing with the uh, Little Rock Nine at a school in Phoenix. In the days after the Little Rock Nine reenactment came under uh, scrutiny, the basis Phoenix Central School argued that it was being unfairly painted as racially insensitive. The Arizona Republic uh, notes that the school is predominantly predominantly non-white. White students make up one third of the school, uh, of the student body, according to figures on the school's website. And Rosalind Thompson, the school's leader, who is an African-American woman, said that she would never approve an activity that hurt African-American students. Uh, but on April 17th, after a meeting with, quote, members of our school community and several community leaders, end quote, Rosalind Thompson posted a statement on Facebook apologizing quote, for not fully recognizing and addressing the potential different perspectives that could be uh, raised by the exercise, okay? And Thompson added that the exercise was, quote, unquote, certainly well-intentioned. Now, for Rodriguez and uh, other critics of these uh, kinds of classroom activities, the issue isn't really about whether the school had good intentions or not. Rather, the problem is, is that even if other students of color are fine with the activity, exercises like the Little Rock Nine simulation lack nuance and force African-American students, especially to reenact some of the most painful moments in African-American history. Now, this is an argument that has been repeatedly made by historians, scholars, and researchers who say that student simulations on these issues are not just potentially harmful for African-American students in a classroom, they are also ineffective and reflect a lack of cultural competency. Now these solutions highlight a deeper problem with how uh, schools teach students about slavery, uh, about, uh, slavery and segregation. And, and absolutely, yes it does. Now 2018 report by the Southern Poverty Law Center okay, called Teaching Hard History American Slavery, took a comprehensive look at these issues, surveying students and teachers across the country, 
reviewing popular textbooks and looking at uh, state standards on education about uh, slavery to better understand how uh, slavery was how slavery was being taught in schools. The researchers found that schools teach about the history of slavery and civil rights in woefully incomplete ways. Woefully incomplete ways. They are absolutely correct. Okay, and that as a result, uh, students can't answer basic questions about the cause of the Civil War or other related history questions. And I talked about this in the beginning. 8% of the 1,000 high school senior survey, uh, only 8% knew that slavery was the central reason why uh, the Civil War was fought. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so the Southern Poverty Law Center report was especially critical of the use of simulations in the classroom arguing that they are not that they are quote not shown to be effective as a learning strategy end quote the report noted that simulations quote can harm vulnerable children end quote and that the trauma of such lessons is compounded for african-american students okay the, the 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 report noted that simulations can harm vulnerable children and that the trauma of such lessons is compounded for african-american children now instead the report encourages schools to teach quote-unquote hard history a history that does not shy away from difficult discussions of racism uh, white supremacy policy and the ways historical injustices have influenced uh, modern racial disparities. It added that scholar that schools uh, should be should begin to fully integrate uh, teachings about slavery into a uh, broader U.S. history, and that the classroom use of more historical documents can help better reflect the diverse voices and uh, experiences of enslaved persons. But as the Arizona case makes abundantly clear many schools across the country still haven't gotten the message okay now neil lester is the director of the project humanities is, is the director of project humanities at arizona arizona, arizona state university and uh, he told the arizona republic quote it's exhausting that this keeps happening over and over again it's beside the point whether the student volunteered or not it shouldn't have been a lesson plan that needed to be demonstrated in the way it was, okay? And these are referring to the, uh, the mock reenactment of the Little Rock Nine. All right, let's look at uh, some more of your comments here. And I'll show you some of the information that we cover in the online course also. <coughs> uh, Jillian said, Florida State University has a Black Student Union. It is a new thing, it is, it is a new thin building, and it's been it's barely even noticed. It's a new thin building. Am I wrong for being offended by this? Um, let's see here, Polita. Okay, uh, ask France to share the link for the children's book about our rich Haitian history and uh, independence. Is France on? Uh, post the link here. All right, now, if we look at, very quickly here, we look at the article from theatlantic.com. This is the first article that I saw that talked about this study from the Southern Poverty Law Center. It came out February 1st, 2018. What kids are really learning about slavery? What kids are really learning about slavery? And they interviewed Ursula Wolf Rocca, or Roca, who is a high school U.S. history teacher in Lake Oswego, uh, Oregon okay, which is a suburb of Portland, Oregon. And she has encountered students' common misconceptions, such as the belief that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves and that the Civil War was really about states' rights. Her straightforward solution is assigning original documents, assigning original documents. She said, quote, read Lincoln's first inaugural address. That was March 4th, 1861. Uh, read Lincoln's first inaugural address 
and you do not find a fiery abolitionist, but someone promising to enforce the future of the slave clause, uh, read the uh, Articles of Secession uh, from, the, from the various Confederate states, and you find striking declarations from slave states that their actions are rooted in a desire to protect slavery, absolutely. And if you read the article from um, the one, this one from the Atlantic dealing with um, why the Civil War was fought or something like that, they have excerpts of the statements of secession from various uh, states in the Confederacy. And they tell you why they are succeeding from the Union. I think it's here. the name of that article yeah why there was a civil war why there was a civil war from may 1st 2017 the atlantic.com why there was a civil war um, because the civil war was uh, fought over slavery quote our position is thoroughly identified now this is mississippi in their declaration of secession our position is thoroughly identified with the institution of slavery the greatest material interest of the world uh, when we look at Louisiana's statement of secession, they said, uh, quote, the people of the slaveholding states are bound together by the same necessity and determination to preserve, to preserve African slavery. When we look at uh, Texas in their statement of secession, Texas said, quote, the servitude of the African race as, as existing in these states is mutually beneficial to both bond and free and is abundantly authorized and justified by the experience of mankind and the revealed will of the almighty creator as recognition as recognized by all christian nations this is texas in their state of secession texas is is, is explaining why they are succeeding from the union taking up arms against the union committing treason okay texas the, the state of texas said the servitude of the african race as existing in the United States is mutually beneficial to both bond and free and is abundantly authorized and justified by the experience of mankind. Okay. How many enslaved Africans did you survey to ask, is this, is this working out for you? How many, how many did you serve? When did you take a survey? How many were in that survey? But these are statements of secession. This is why the Civil War was fought. It, it was fought to bring the South back into the Union because these Southern states seceded from the Union because they thought Lincoln was going to free the slaves because Lincoln was of the Republican Party, which was organized, which was the political party organized by groups of abolitionists in 1854. So he becomes president-elect November 6, 1860. The next month, December 20th, 1860, South Carolina becomes the first state to secede from the union. Okay, they think they think Lincoln is going to uh, they think Lincoln is going to free the slaves. So check out this article: Why there was a civil war from the Atlantic.com. All right, but this history is deep, and this is an example of how history is in the headlines. All right. Okay. Let's um, let's look at some of um, the. Let me see. Let me. Okay. So I finished with that article. Here's here's the first article I talked about. This is from uh, Vox.com. Schools keep teaching slavery and civil rights history in ways that traumatize Black students. Okay. So let's uh, we'll post this here. And then let's look at some of the um, information we cover in the online course that I teach, uh, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. We'll look at this for a minute here. If you need me to post a link again for the online course, let me know, I'll post it. But this is some of the things that I work to come back, the misinformation. Most African-Americans don't understand the history don't understand our history, history of slavery. Most white people don't understand history, period, uh, history of this country. 
Okay, so this was um, what kids are really learning about slavery. This is the article from theatlantic.com. Uh, okay, and this talked about the article from uh, this talked about the study from the Southern Poverty Law Center, teaching hard history of American slavery. Now, this statue right here is a statue of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, this statue was erected in Washington, D.C. in 1876, okay? And let me see just a second here. His computer's freezing up on me. Um, this is called the Lincoln Emancipation Statue, the Lincoln Emancipa Emancipation Statue. And this statue was paid for by enslaved, uh, by former enslaved African people and erected in Washington, D.C. in 1876. The statue has been criticized for representing the history of slavery from a paternalistic perspective. Okay, I wonder why. I wouldn't get that impression looking at this from a paternalistic perspective. All right, let's see here. Let's skip over some of this. And I deal with why this history is so important. I deal with some of the studies that have come out that talk about why uh, teaching our children their history is so important. Um, January 1st, 2013, there was an, a study that came out from um, Harvard University and Pittsburgh University, University of Pittsburgh, University of Pittsburgh. Uh, they did a joint study. And uh, this, uh, this article is entitled, Black Teens with Racial Pride Do Better in School. Black Teens with Racial Pride Do Better in School. <clears throat> and they, they found that African-American teenagers perform better academically when their parents instill in them a sense of racial pride. A new study by the University of Pittsburgh and Harvard University shows that when parents, <clears throat> excuse me, when parents use racial socialization, such as talking to their children or engaging in activities that promote feelings of racial knowledge, pride, and connection, and offsets racial discrimination's potentially negative impact on students' academic development, okay? So there are a number of studies that uh, show things like this, but if we look at uh, some of the information that we cover in the uh, online course, I deal with what was the transatlantic slave trade, what were some of the uh, events that led up to the transatlantic slave trade happening? So we deal with things, uh, try to deal with things chronologically, and we deal with thousands of years of history. Uh, as well. Uh, what role did Christopher Columbus play? So Columbus was central to uh, the spread of the transatlantic slave trade, okay? And we have to understand uh, Columbus and his four voyages uh, setting sail August 3rd, 1492, because Columbus laid, helps lay, lay the foundation for slavery, racism, capitalism, the exploitation of indigenous people. And uh, we also deal with did Africans sell themselves into slavery, deal with that complicated history, because uh, it's not exactly how uh, it's oftentimes portrayed. We're African people in America before the slave trade. Yes, we were. We've been here going back at least 51,700 years. If you read uh, Dr. David M. Hotep's book, The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence. Uh, this was our land stolen from us. Uh, he talks about the Khoisan, who have the oldest DNA on the planet. <clears throat> they come from Southern Africa. Uh, they go all around the world. They're the ancestors to the Ainu and the Twa. Uh, the Twa are derisively, pejoratively called pygmies in uh, European anthropology and archaeology. So we're African people in America before the slave trade, yes. Now, this does not mean the transatlantic slave trade did not happen. Yes, it did happen. We come to this land different periods of time for different reasons. The 800-year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors, shocking archaeological discoveries that are causing experts to rethink everything, insurance companies that took out insurance policies on slave ships and enslaved Africans on plantations, Freemasonry, America, and the founding fathers, origins of the term uh, America, in Africa, problems with slave movies, the uh, Asar, Aset, and Heru, who the Greeks called Osiris, Isis, and Horus, and the first Immaculate Conception story. That, that story goes back to at least 3300 BC in ancient Nubia, what's also called, what was also called Ta-Nehisi. Links to ancient Kemet, or Egypt, and early Christianity, Freemasonry in America, and the fake Willie Lynch letter of 1712, because Willie Lynch never historically existed. 
okay? Uh, contrary to popular belief, I know people are still talking about the Willie Lynch letter, 1712, don't really know why. The Willie Lynch letter has been proven to be a fraud and Willie Lynch never historically existed. Okay, uh, France, uh, France said uh, we can expect we can't expect anyone else to tell our stories. Uh, okay, posted the website here. Thoroughbredbooks.com, thoroughbredbooks.com. All right, France, email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network also. All right, so this is Dr. David M. Hotep. Um, he, he wrote, the, his book came out in 2011, The First Americans Were Africans Documented Evidence. His new book should be out in the next month or so, The First Americans Were Africans Revisited. Page 14 of his book deals with uh, a discovery made by Dr. Albert Goodyear in 2004 in Allendale County, South Carolina. The Dr. Albert Goodyear is an archeologist at the University of South Carolina. <clears throat> and here's what they discovered. They uh, found uh, artifacts, architecture, campsites, carvings, Egyptian writings, footprints in lava, genetic M174D haploid groups dealing with D DNA and genetics, linguistics, paintings, skulls, skeleton structures, and tools. Um, and the, uh, this was this dates back at least 51,700 years ago. This date, this is before Native Americans came to came into existence. Okay, this is why he talks about the first Americans were Africans. He deals with in his book how Asians come to this land around 3000 BC and the Africans and Asians intermix in their offspring or who we call Native Americans. When you look at old black and white photographs of Native Americans, these are usually a dark skinned people. So his book has 713 footnotes fairly documented in the African presence uh, in this country. Here is Dr. Albert Goodyear. This is an article from ScienceDaily.com, ScienceDaily.com. This is a scientific website. This is an article from November 18th, 2004. Evidence puts man in North America 50,000 years ago. Okay, evidence puts man in North America 50,000 years ago. And this deals with Dr. Uh, uh, Albert Goodyear's discovery. And here is a summary of the article from sciencedaily.com. Okay, we'll post a link here to the uh, online course once again, where I go deep into all this information. These are some slides from the online course, Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, What They Didn't Teach You in School. It's a 14 hour, seven session on online course that I teach. It's all on demand, watch at your own pace, watch from around the world. It's on sale, $40 regularly, $130. And it's a 10 course online bundle pack. New evidence puts man in North America 50,000 years ago. Radiocarbon tests of carbonized plant remains where artifacts were unearthed last May along the Savannah River in Allendale County by University of South Carolina archaeologist Dr. Albert Goodyear indicate that the sediments containing these artifacts are at least 50,000 years ago, meaning that humans inhabited North America long before the last ice age. Okay, so you can read that full article of science date, sciencedaily.com, but this deals with some of this information. So I deal with different archaeological discoveries, like the one that came out February 2010 about stone tools being found on the Greek island of Crete uh, that date back at least 130,000 years ago, but Crete has been an island for more than 5 million years. I deal with the lost city of, uh, Tana, the lost city of Egypt called Tanis Heraklion. This uh, discovery was was shown in 2013. This was a city that was swallowed into the sea about 1,200 years ago, and uh, they, at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the sea, they were able to uh, recover. Um, let's see, 16 foot tall statues, 700 anchors, countless gold coins, and smaller artifacts. It's believed that this. Uh, city was built around 8th century BC. The lead archaeologist, his name is Frank Gaudio. Uh, these are some of the statues that they discovered at the bottom of the sea that comes from ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. Okay, this is one of Osset or Isis. This is uh, the bottom, the legs of that were broken off of a statue. Okay, this is from probably uh, Osset. You have the horns and the in the in the and the uh, sun disc as well. Okay, but this all ties into our history. So these are some of the things I deal with. Then we look at uh, 
we did we, we look at the 800 year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors and what the Moors taking to Europe they're taking the teachings from ancient Kemet ancient Egypt into Europe we look at the Tekken which is a symbol of resurrection coming from the story of Asar, Aset, and Heru, who the Greeks called Osiris, Isis, and Horus. But the Washington Monument is a Tekken also. Um, and we understand that 50 of the 56 signers, 50 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence were Freemasons, okay, as well. Um, okay, and uh, I'm, I'm still, bro, I'll, I'm, I'll be done in a few minutes. Uh, 50 of the 56 signers of, of the Declaration of Independence were Freemasons, okay, when we look at this history. So there were about 1,200 Tekkenu um, in ancient Kemet, okay, Tekkenu for plural, Tekken uh, singular. And if we look at Freemasonry, right, and Tony Browder talks about this in um, his book, Egypt on the Potomac, okay? Browder talks about this in Egypt on the Potomac. Um, the word Mason is derived from the Latin words mass and sun. And Mason means child of light and expresses the desire to pursue light, which is a metaphor for the sun, which symbolizes knowledge. The term child of light or sons and daughters of light was first used to identify students who had completed 42 years of study in the temples of ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. Many Masonic temples were modeled after the temples, temples of ancient Kemet, places where light and knowledge was imparted in a series of steps or degrees. So when you go to institutions of higher learning, you get your credentials in a series of degrees, associate's degree, master's degree, you know, bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD, et cetera. And this is where this originally comes from. When you study liberal arts colleges, well, in the temples in ancient Kemet, they had they taught the several seven liberal arts, what is ostensibly called the ancient Egyptian mystery system. They taught the seven liberal arts, the arithmetic, the logic, the rhetoric, etc. When you read Stolen Legacy by George G. M. James, uh, Greek philosophy is stolen ancient African philosophy. He talks about the trivium and the quadrivium. He talks about the seven liberal arts and the trivium and the quadrivium, the three and the four. If you look at pages 18 and 32 of uh, Egypt on the Potomac, Browder breaks this down and, and uh, Browder talks about how the, the terms child of light and sons of daughter of light were first used to identify students who had completed 42 years of study in the temples of ancient Kemet. Because we taught women as well, we didn't discriminate. So we taught African women also. But when you look at Europe being called the dark continent, there's a reason why, okay? Wait a second, there's no sound. Can y'all hear me? Great, okay, no sound. Can you hear me? You should be able to hear me now. Because I can hear myself, so I uh, want make sure you all can hear me. Refresh your, uh, refresh your screen if you can't hear. Give a second, refresh your screen. Okay, you can hear now, okay, good. All right, so um, for eons, light was associated with knowledge. And even if you watch a cartoon, right, the cartoon character gets a bright idea and a light bulb goes off over the cartoon character's head, bright being associated with light. Okay, if you have a child that's not bright, you say that's a dim-witted child, D-I-M, associated with lack of light. So when we deal with Europe being a dark continent pushed into the dark ages in 476 AD when the Vandals and the Visigoths crushed the western portion of the Roman Empire, they're pushed into a period of hundreds of years of ignorance. And it's going to be the African Moors who are taking the teachings from ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. They're taking the, the light from ancient Africa into the dark continent, which is Europe, and they're bringing Europe out of the dark ages. And the next period in European history is called what? The Renaissance age. Renaissance being an age of enlightenment, light, once again, okay? And we know 50 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence were Freemason, uh, Freemasons as well. 
All right, so this this is a uh, a famous statue of uh, Asara Aset Aset and Heru, Asara the father in the middle, uh, Heru the son or Horus, and then Aset the uh, mother who who gives uh, who has a virgin birth. So when we look at this famous statue of Aset, she has the baby Heru here said to be born on December twenty fifth of virgin birth. And when we look at this image of Isis as a white woman who was shown to us by DC Comics on the Saturday morning cartoon, a uh, Saturday morning TV show, live action TV show, the Shazam and Isis Hour, okay, we were told that this woman got her powers from ancient Egypt. She can fly, she can do all these things, and, and they said her name was Isis. But when we were watching this in the 1970s, and I still have comic books today that promote this TV show, came on CBS Saturday mornings, the Shazam and Isis Hour. We didn't know that this was a copy of an African woman. We didn't know this was a co-option of our history and our mythology and African culture. This is from the, this is the DVD cover from the complete box set of the, of the uh, Secrets of Isis series. It's on DVD, if you want to get it. So from all set in Heru, we get the Black Madonna and Child, which was worshipped all throughout Europe, still worshipped through Europe today. You get the Black Madonna and Child. And from that, we get the decolorized version of it. And they still have statues of the Black Madonna and Child in uh, Poland, Italy, all throughout Europe. They still, they still have it. And then when we look at Renoko Rashidi's book, you can order his books, get, uh, check them out at drrenoko.com, drrenoko.com. Black Star, the African Presence of Early Europe. Got this one back in uh, November 11th, November 2011, I should say. And I've interviewed Renoko a number of times. He has uh, pictures of the statues of the Black Madonna and Child he's taken um, throughout the world. Because he's been to about 120 islands and countries. He's taken probably about 40,000 pictures by now. But he has he has pictures of uh, statues of the Black Madonna and Child. Now it's not black because it's dirty. It's black because it was originally black. And this is what it's coming from. Okay, paintings, all of this. Okay, he's been to uh, the Notre Dame uh, Notre Dame Cathedral, and Notre Dame was actually built on the remains of two temples. One of those temples was dedicated to Isis. Uh, this is the Black Virgin of of paris right here the black virgin of paris all of this our lady of the pillar gothic cathedral uh this is in france so hopefully he doesn't mind me showing you this here We're promoting this book okay <laughs> black madonna and child painting kremlin moscow okay right up here so these other people know who we are these other people know who we are. We don't understand who we are. Black Madonna and Child statue in, uh, this is in Spain, right here. So the, we have to understand African people, especially the African woman, was worshiped around the world, especially throughout Europe. But we've been stripped of our history and culture, and now we don't know who we are. Okay, so let's continue here. Uh, so we do a lot of history in this online course. Um, this is Dr. Leonard Jeffries, one of my teachers. You've seen a lot of my interviews with him, heard my interviews with him. Uh, Dr. Leonard Jeffries and Professor Jane Small, when they teach, uh, they talk about the pyramid principle. So you hear me talk about that as well. Here's the pyramid of Khafre at Giza. The pyramid has three sides. The foundation, our foundation is African history and culture. This gives us our VIPs, our values, our interests, and our principles. This influences our economic empowerment and our political empowerment. Okay, so if this foundation is not in place, doesn't matter how much money we have, we won't know what to do with it. Okay, so we have a $1.3 trillion economy and 97% of our dollars are spent with people that don't look like us because that foundation is not in place. Dr. J teaches us that whoever controls the images controls your self-esteem, self-respect, and self-development. Whoever controls the history controls the vision. So 
you know, I've been studying media for 27 years. I'm in media. I do radio 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, WFDF here in Detroit. I've been studying media for 27 years. My degree is in business administration with a major in marketing, foundation of marketing psychology. And when I was studying business, you know, at Wayne State University, I saw the intersection between understanding African history and culture and understanding media. All right, here's Professor Kaba Kamene. So I deal with some information from Kaba in one of my interviews, one of my teachers as well. You see him in the Hidden Colors documentaries. We talk about uh, origins of the word America. Now, in the 1828 Noah Webster Dictionary, and it's online, you can go to WebsterDictionary1828.com. If you look up the word American, right, they tell you that an American is a native of America. They tell you the word American was originally applied to the aboriginals or copper color races found here by the Europeans. Well, wait a second. If they're saying that these were the races found here by the Europeans when Europeans got here, that means that the Europeans were not originally here. That means that the term American originally did not refer to white people. Well, who did American originally refer? Who were the original Americans? See, this is why Dr. David M. Hotel is correct when he says the first Americans were Africans. This is something that we don't, a lot of people don't understand. The original Americans were African people. And then when we look at Columbus, when Columbus uh, goes on his four voyages, 70% of the people he encounters on his four voyages were African people. Okay, but now the term an American is applied to the descendants of uh, born in America. Okay, so let's see. Uh, these, are, these are some of the things I deal with. This is the, <clears throat> these are the official flags of the islands of uh, Corsica and Sardinia. They have African Moors heads on them because the Moors are in those areas. Okay, and, and uh, Renoko Rashidi has that in, in his book, uh, Black Star, The African Presence of Early Europe. This is just one of his many books, okay? He, he's, written, he's written many books. It's just one of his many books. But this is where I first saw that, and I started doing research on this. I said, dude, these are, because the Moors were in these areas, and it took a monumental effort to defeat them. So originally, these bandanas were blindfolds to signify that they had been conquered, they were prisoners. But because of tourism and to be politically correct, things like this, they changed the blindfolds to bandanas. Okay, so we deal with who the Moors, we deal with, I'll show you what Columbus went on his four voyages, because Columbus never came to the land we call the United States of America, okay? Uh, Columbus never came to the land we call the United States of America. The closest he came here is Cuba, which is 90 miles away. So 70% of the people Columbus encounters in, uh, in his four voyages in the islands were still African people. Uh, Dr. David M. Hotep talks about in his book, so we deal with Dr. Claude Anderson as well as one of my teachers also with the middle, what was the middle passage? Um, we deal with life insurance companies which sometimes in life insurance policies which sometimes taken out uh, on certain slaves on the plantations uh, in the US who performed very t dangerous work or who worked in uh, coal mines, sawmills, et cetera, okay? And one of those life insurance companies that did this is now called the New York Life Insurance Company. It started out as the Nautilus Mutual Life Insurance Company in the spring of 1845 in uh, Manhattan. Okay, so these are just a few of the things that we deal with in this online course. It's a 14-hour, seven-session online course. You go at your own pace. It's Dr. Malefe Keti Asante. We deal with his uh, article Hearing Lewis Gates is wrong about African involvement in the slave trade, because even though Gates does write some uh, good books and, you know, or, or write some good articles, I've read dozens of Dr. Henry Lewis Gates articles, uh, some of the information dealing with the transatlantic slave trade and African involvement in the transatlantic slave trade is wrong. And, you know, I saw a six part documentary, The African Americans, Many Rivers to Cross. This is his book that he put out, which is a companion to that six-part documentary. Many people don't know this book exists, The African Americans, Many Rivers to Cross. This is the companion to the six-part documentary. He saw on PBS in 2012. I mean, this is, this is a good book. Now, he don't deal with the African presence in this country going back at least 51,700 years ago. He doesn't talk about the Moors. He doesn't talk about any of that. But other than that, he has some good information in the book. Okay. 
All right, so these are just a few of the things that we deal with um, in the online course. And we'll post a link again. Once again, it's, uh, it's on sale, uh, $40, regularly $130. It, 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 you stream it, watch it at your own pace, watch as many times as you want. This is at our online school. Uh, we'll post a link here uh, once again. And uh, there, are, there are other online classes in that bundle pack as well as a 10 course online bundle pack, okay? African American business owners post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast as well. We'll let you know how you can advertise with us. Let's look at some of your comments. Alita, okay, Alita said, uh, Eric Holtz Claw, Erica Holtz Claw, what about Wonder Woman? She's a uh, Wonder Woman's of uh, Egypt influence, okay, coming from the Amazons. And we know we have the Amazons of Dahomey, okay, called the Ahosi or the Mino. Uh, the Amazons of Dahomey, and this is who the Dora Milaje in the Black Panther movie are based upon. Also in that online bundle pack, you get uh, an online class I did dealing with the film Black Panther also. That's in there as well. Okay, and then our, our second uh, advertiser is uh, Dark Magentus, darkmagentus.com. Uh, Dark Magentus specializes in creating home spa products based on nature's healing and soothing properties. Uh, Dark Magenta carries uh, essential oil and cannabidiol infused bath bombs, shower steamers, sugar, uh, sugar scrubs, and soaps. Uh, they include uh, oils and herbs such as lavender, rosemary, eucalyptus, sage, cedarwood, oatmeal, shea butter, and uh, cannabidiol and more. They also carry oil diffusers and 100% pure essential oils. Okay, visit their website, uh, darkmagentas.com, darkmagentas.com, uh, and indulge in these treats for the body and mind. We know Mother's Day is coming up as well. So these make great gifts. Uh, women can buy them for themselves also, darkmagentas.com. Okay, email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. And um, African American business owners will let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network and get we can get you up and running uh, today. And then also uh, we promote your uh, business in our live broadcast, and we put this on our YouTube channel also. And uh, we put these broadcasts on eight different podcast platforms: iTunes, Castbox, uh, Acast, FM Player, Stitcher. I've been doing the African History Network show nine years, three years on 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation uh, in Detroit. And we do that Sunday night. And on our Sunday night show, we put your commercial into the audio podcast of the show uh, also. So you reach each episode reaches thousands of people. Okay, a current promotion, get three months for the price of one. Uh, we have a few more ad spots left. Email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay, so everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page, and uh, you can go back and watch it. We'll have this on our YouTube channel also, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P on YouTube. Download the, uh, download the Teaching Hard History of American Slavery, 52-page uh, uh, study from the Southern Poverty Law Center, which documents how the history of slavery is being incorrectly taught in schools across the country and how it, and in various ways that can, that can be corrected. Those in Detroit, Saturday, April 27th, uh, 2019, come on out to the um, second annual Mary Ann Godboldo Forum for Parental Rights. This is, I'll be there. I'm one of the speakers. I'm on the panel. They have me on the program. This is 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's a free event, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m at Hartford Memorial Baptist Church, uh, 18700 James Cousins Freeway in Detroit. Uh, this is part of the Social Justice Ministry. This is the second annual Marianne Godbodo Forum for Parental Rights. And Know Your Rights, Change the Law, registrations 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, there'll be a continental breakfast also. There'll be a hot lunch provided as well. And they have a phone number to call for food preparation, so to, to RSVP for the food preparation. 
Um, and for more information, call 313-717-0521, 313-717-0521. There'll be an African marketplace. will be a vendor there as well, the African History Network. But there'll be speakers, poets, drummers, um, guest speaker, attorney Allison Fomar. There'll be family judges there and more. There'll be a resource room, babysitting service. There's a youth track also for youth. So bring the family. Uh, learn about the rights of parents, grandparents, and families for legal and medical issues. Okay, so this is taking place. Uh, and visit justiceformarianne.org, the number four, justiceformarianne.org for more information as well. We posted the link here also, okay? So this is going on Saturday. This is one of the great things going on in Detroit. Yes, gentrification is going on in Detroit, but there are also other good things taking place uh, also. All right, Erica, say master teacher. All right, thanks, Erica. Uh, we'll be on Sunday, uh, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the African History Network show, 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation WFDF will broadcast here on Facebook Live as well, so be sure to tune into that. We have a great show planned for you. I'm still laying it out. All right, and then also, uh, if you like this type of information, you could donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show paypal.me forward slash the AHN show um, or at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Click on the yellow donate button. You can also set up for a recurring donation if you like. That really helps us to keep doing the research, um, finance the African History Network show, pay the bills, stay on the air, et cetera, okay? That really helps. All right, hey, we have to get out of here. Remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating and empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior. Uh, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. Um, also posting information here, I forgot to tell you, we have the uh, eight DVD bundle pack, the Africans that were here before Columbus. The Africans that were here before Columbus includes uh, double lectures I've done with Dr. David M. Hotel, Professor Kaba Kamene, includes a lecture from uh, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema dealing with they came before Columbus, and one from uh, Dr. John Henry Clark also dealing with Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust, okay? The Africans that were here before Columbus, eight DVD bundle pack, that's on sale, $50. Check that out also. Uh, right now, let's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.